Hi everybody, I am Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio and today I just decided I was going to share with you guys um, a fabulous technique that we've had overwhelming response that actually um, it was one of my customers that uh, posted on my group page, uh, Foey Rollers. And so I decided that it'd be great to share this so that people could see how it was done because it's a very, very easy finish. And uh, forgive me, I'm taking off my glasses and I'm cleaning them at the moment because all of a sudden I'm just looking at the camera and I'm like, gosh, what is that on there? Um, so I just would love to say hi to everybody and uh, happy Monday. I hope everybody is having a fabulous Monday. Um, I'm feeling very rested because we did cheat and we took off and had a nice three-day weekend um, with some really good friends of ours and went down to the Del Mar racetrack and played the ponies on uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, I can't say I won anything, but I had a lot of fun and uh, I only lost $38, so that to me is very cheap entertainment, okay? Okay, my glasses are way dirtier than I thought they were. I'm not sure what I got on them. So, um, as I am sharing here with you guys, give me a second while I try to clean these, um, I wanted to um, also share with you guys that I have some expos that I'm involved with um, coming up for September and October that I would love for you guys to know about. And if you get a chance, you need to go online and check them out and maybe, um, at least visit the expo and, and maybe even get to come take a class from me. Um, I'm always starting to do a lot of travel um, for the fall. Okay, so now I can see you guys again. Oh, uh, well, it's nice to see a couple of people that have joined me. That's awesome. Okay, so starting the craziness here is going to be um, General Finishes Furniture Flippin' Expo. Um, I'm not sure if I got that perfectly correct or not. But if you go on to the General Finishes um, website, which is just generalfinishes.com, um, you can read all about it. Um, I think there's 27 different classes that are going to be offered. I am one of the presenters. And um, it's a wonderful event. This is the second year in a row, and uh, they do an awesome job. Um, it's an opportunity to, I think for $229, um, it's a two or two and a half a day event where you get to take nine different workshops um, and just choose whichever ones you want. So I think that is absolutely an awesome um, deal for $229 and get to take 20, or nine different workshops. Um, it's a great, great deal. So I hope you guys will check that out. Um, and that is, um, like I said, the beginning of September. I think it's September 5th and 7th, right after Labor Day. And then I am on to what's called the Penners Conference. And I'm doing two of them this year. We're going to be doing Dallas, Texas, uh, the September 29th and 30th. And then the following weekend, uh, we're crazy, and we're going to be at the Scottsdale, Phoenix, Arizona Penners Conference. Uh, so those are back-to-back -back weekends. Uh, the Arizona one is October 6th and 7th, I believe. Um, and you can go on to, I think it's Par pennersconference.com and check out all the details. I have no idea how many classes they are got going on, but there is a ton that is offered. It's a huge expo. Um, I'll be teaching, we'll be demoing, um, just a whole lot going on. So if you get a chance, check those out. And if you register for the Penners, uh, please do me a favor and use my registration code, which is just artistic. Uh, so check those out, you guys. Um, the great events coming up. And so, as I said, um, I just want to share with you guys this great finish. It's easy um, and fun, and I thought it would be wonderful to have a chance to get on here and show you guys something. Um, so what I'm starting with, and I'm just going to turn the camera a little bit so you can see next to me here. Um, and yes, it is uh, it's a little warm here. It's not really that warm. It's just humid today. Uh, so I'm feeling really hot at the moment. Um, Okay, so I have a board here behind me, and this is painted, or was base coated, in I believe either warm silver or champagne metallic paint by Modern Masters. And you don't have to use a metallic paint, okay? It just happened to be a board that was already base coated, 
and something I could go forward on quickly. So um, on Thursday last week, before I left town, um, I rolled out my um, foil adhesive on here. So this is my brand of the Artsyville foil adhesive. So this board is nice and sticky, okay? And obviously it doesn't matter how long you leave the um, foil adhesive on the surface. Uh, so like I said, I rolled this on Thursday. So it's sat here Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's Monday afternoon. And um, the surface is, is perfectly fine. The only thing I ever say about, you know, putting the adhesive on uh, way in advance of, of your project is it's sticky, so anything can stick to it. So you guys kind of got to be a little bit careful. Make sure that you don't have it somewhere that you're going to come back and find something stuck to it, okay? Um, so very simple here. Uh, a base coat color. And I was looking to find a base coat that was kind of similar to my foil color. Um, so we're going to be using my um, just bright gold uh, foil here. And um, I wanted a base coat that was similar in color. I didn't want a major, major con contrast. Um, because when you are transferring your foils, you're going to find if your base coat color and your foil color are similar or close in um, value and tone, that your uh, foils are going to look, the transfers are going to look more perfect, okay? And I hate to even use the word um, perfect because um, anybody that's done um, foils before just knows that uh, part of what we love about foils are all their imperfections and we just have to embrace them all. So um, you'll see less of your imperfections if you have your colors closer together. Uh, so I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, so this is all ready to go. Okay, so a base coat, let that dry, put on just one coat, okay, just one coat of my foil adhesive and allow that to dry to a firm tack. Now, depending on your environment, um, minimum of 15 to 30 minutes, up to maybe an hour or so, especially the more humid it is. Um, I've been in Houston, Texas during some of those really, really fabulous humid days and um, oh my gosh, it really takes a lot longer for the foil adhesive to dry in that environment. So give it like an hour or two. Don't rush it, okay? Um, and this is awesome. I see more and more people joining um, in. And if you guys missed anything from the beginning, um, I'll do a little recap. And then also um, when this is posted, you guys can watch it from the very beginning and not miss anything. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is this is just one of my... Um, 12 inch rolls, okay, of the foil. So they come in either a 12 inch roll or a full uh, 24 inches, 25 inches. Um, and when I've got the smaller rolls, that means we just have to kind of piece them together. So all I'm going to do is kind of estimate and measure here um, the length I need. Oh, the humidity is actually working in my favor at the moment. That the foil just kind of stuck to my leg, okay? <laughs> And let me cut a couple of sheets so I'm ready to go. And, you know, if you guys have any questions as I'm doing this, I'd be more than happy to um, answer those as I'm going. Um, I'd love for you guys always to join in and um, share with us um, where you're from, which, where you're tuning in from, and... Uh, just kind of let me know that you're there and hi Karen it's nice to see you and thank you Fabian um, not really feeling it today but I appreciate the compliment <laughs> okay so a little bit about foil because um, I hate to assume that many of you have followed me and kind of understand the foils but I always feel like I want to teach you guys and especially the newbies that have never been here before I sure want for you guys to understand what I'm doing okay so um, basically, this is the um, beautiful bright gold foil. Okay, it's bright and shiny. And the side that you are seeing here is the side which you can determine what the color is going to be. And um, that is actually plastic on that side. So the side that has the foil, which is basically just a metalization, 
that is on the back of like almost cellophane, okay? It's, it's not as thick and heavy as cellophane, but it's kind of like cellophane, just clear plastic, is the back side. And the back side just looks like a, a matte silver. Some of them could be a different color on the back side, but that is the side that you're transferring, okay? And the way we transfer it is we have the foil adhesive, which is an extremely sticky surface, okay? And then either use like a terry rag, or if that doesn't transfer enough, um, we have this wonderful scrub brush that I finally have in stock now. Um, so that way you guys don't have to go hunting for this because it really is a stiff bristle brush that I use to transfer. Hi, Doris. Thanks for um, joining us from that beautiful, humid Houston. <laughs> Love your town. Just not sure I could ever live there, okay? <laughs> so... Um, I hope that's a little bit of information about the foils themselves and kind of how we do the transferring. And I forgot my scrub brush. I'm going to go rub, run here and grab it. And yes, no matter how hard I try to be prepared for these, I always forget something, okay? And let's see. Oh, I have a terry rag that's not too, too far away. Now let me get my stool out of the way. And, okay. So, um... Hi, Colleen, how are you? Okay, so obviously my foil is not gonna cover the entire surface, okay? And I'm gonna work from left to right because that's just kind of the way I've always, always worked. It drives me nuts to go the other way. I don't know why, I think just too many years of always going from left to right. So I always say, make sure you guys have the beautiful shiny side facing you because if you get this stuck in here backwards, I said that this side is plastic, and if you get the plastic stuck in the foil adhesive, you almost rip that off, okay? It's incredibly sticky, and your plastic is wanna just be stuck to it, okay? So I'm just going to position this up here, and, oops, my edge actually, okay, see so my edge here rolled over a little bit, see how it's stuck in there, okay? And I'm just going to use my hand or my terry rag just to kind of smooth it out, okay? And I wanted to show you guys the transfer with using the smaller sheets because even if you're on, you know, a medium-sized project, okay, where you've got a bigger drawer front or a desktop and you've only got the 12-inch roll, you're going to have to seam things together. Um, but even if you have the bigger two-foot roll and you're on a wall, you still have to seam things together. So... I really wanted to um, show you guys how to do this. Um, so Colleen is gonna be joining me here soon again. Colleen's been here once before. Colleen is one of my um, retailers up in Canada. So Colleen, make sure that you share your um, website information and that way um, anybody in Canada can find my stuff up there from you. And Karen is also on here, and Karen is with Blessed Nest, who's another one of my retailers. So um, please share um, your guys' information too, because I want people to know where they can find my stuff, not just at my location, but I got retailers all over the place. Um, so, okay, Karen's asking, just a quick recap. Um, base coat color, something similar to my gold, okay? So I've got um, a metallic gold underneath, and I'm using uh, definitely a metallic bright gold foil. And then one layer of the foil adhesive, and we're ready to actually transfer the foil. So that's where we're at. Thank you, Karen, for posting. Um, okay, so I always tell everybody, you know, go ahead and just rub the foil first with a terry rag and see how much transfer that you're going to get and determine if that's enough, okay? So if I pull this back, you can see that I'm not getting 100%. Oh, that's a really good view too, you guys. Um, so even if you look at the foil, the foil's not completely clear yet. There's still a lot of, or I should say the plastic is not clear yet. There's still a lot of um, foil that is left on there, some of that metallization. So if I just peek underneath and put that foil back up, it's back in position and hopefully those little pieces that didn't transfer yet are going to be right where the adhesive is. So if we're looking for, um, I don't want to say the word perfect again, but we're looking for closer to that 100% uh, transfer, then I'm going to use my great scrub brush here and I'm going to scrub up and down. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to be aware 
If I scrub like this and do circular motion, that is going to telegraph and show in the finish. So I always tell everybody, scrub in vertical first, okay? And once you have um, almost full coverage, okay, and now you can see how much better that transferred, okay? You get in there with a little elbow grease and we got rid of almost all the metalization off of here. Then I could even come back now and I could work a little bit of a circular motion and it should not show, okay? Because I have almost complete coverage. Um, so the other thing I wanted to show you guys with foils is this edge here, I'm staying away from it. I don't know if you guys can tell. Okay, I'm gonna get up here a little closer, more personal. Um, I did not, uh, I haven't like gone along this edge. I'm trying not to transfer that edge because if I run anything across that edge, it will transfer that perfect line. And I'm trying to not get a distinctive line into the finish as I'm trying to kind of get the sections to blend together, okay? So I'm gonna stop short of that edge. Um, so when foiling, okay, there's always what I refer to as salvage. Um, I have, you know, leftover foil on this edge here that's, you know, a salvage edge. I got a little salvage edge on here because I don't want that distinctive um, line in my transfer, okay? So there we go. Um, now, again, you can see really good on here that there's some kind of a weird thing that kind of happened with the transfer. And, you know, I can't always explain all those things. It's just part of foils, okay? Um, and I always tell everybody when you get into foiling, um, realize you're going to get some beautiful, bright, shiny finishes um, that all have imperfections, okay? There is just always something that's going to happen. We've got a strange little um, area here that transferred kind of different. We've got something here that looks like we're still seeing a lot of my base coat and it's a little, I can feel it's a little tacky so it didn't transfer perfectly and it could have been where um, the foil wasn't laying perfectly flat and there was air bubbles and stuff like that. So I can't always explain everything but just realize no matter how hard you try there's always going to be some kind of imperfection. I'm going to get that piece thrown away. Um, the other thing is um, with the finish that I'm doing, you're only going to see this foil um, a little bit in the background, so I'm not worried if I do something different on this side. But you can also wrinkle the foil up first, okay? And that way it already has um, some interest to it and some texture. And I'm going to position this um, and overlap it, okay? So we're going to overlap the previous foiled area. And again, that's why I'm always talking about how there's always going to be salvage and waste. Um, I'm pretty conservative in my figure that I always tell people, um, if you have, you know, 75 square feet of coverage that you need foil for, you know, realize you're probably going to have a good 25% um, waste, okay, waste factor. So you'd want at least, um, you know, 100 square feet of foil to work with. Um, and that's a full roll. So our regular roll that's 12 inches and they're really not 12 inches they're like 12 and a half inches okay <laughs> um, and it's a hundred linear feet that's going to give you 100 square feet which you know I think if I had a project that had 75 square feet I would feel comfortable doing that um, you know and that way you're not worried about you know this extra inch on the side and not feeling like you just have to like use every little tiny piece of it um, there's just there is a little bit of a a salvage and waste factor, okay? So as I am seaming this together, okay, um, I'm gonna use my rag in this area because the X, this area that is um, overlapped, okay, um, has foil and foil. There's no tack here underneath this area. So if I take my scrub brush, and I'm gonna do it down, let's see, I'll just do it up here just so you guys can see this. So if I take my scrub brush and I scrub over that area where I have foil over foil, okay? So that just means that that area had already been transferred, okay? And I pull that off. You can see this area that's kind of matte looking. And basically all I've done is scratch the foil because there was nothing for it to adhere to because the surface was completely already transferred with foil. 
Um, so there was just no adhesive there. So you have to be careful on your seams. Um, and that's why I say I like to use the terry rag and just scrub as hard as I can to try to get that seam to match up. And then try to watch how far I go over so that I'm not going too far over the area that has already had the, the transfer um, of the foil and then move away from that, okay? If you get a little bit of a, a scratch, at least you'll understand what kind of caused that, okay? That you're gonna have some kind of, again, imperfection, okay? Um, which is just, again, part of it. And then you're gonna notice that this is gonna transfer a little bit different over here because I wrinkled the foil first. So all those wrinkles are just part of the finish, okay? So there's gonna be a little bit more um, interest and done on purpose, okay? Um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It just kind of depends on the look that you want. Um, now, when I was talking about your base coat and your um, foil color being close in harmony, okay, as far as tone and color, uh, the closer that is, the less of these imperfections that you'll see. And I'll just pop this up my tape so you can see I still had good contrast okay even though I had a gold underneath there pull this up a little bit higher even though I had a metallic gold underneath here that gold is quite a bit different color than the gold I used to transfer so there's still strong contrast and you're still gonna see way more of my imperfections okay so if I had picked a stronger gold color okay and like I said it doesn't have to be a metallic but if I picked a stronger color that was closer to this gold, you would see way less of those imperfections. So that's just a, a, a little tip on how to disguise or hide um, imperfections. Okay, so we're done with transferring the foil. So the next thing we're gonna do is use one of my decorative rollers, which this is the finish that um, everybody was ooing and eyeing over and wanted to know how to do that was over on the Foey roller page. And oh my gosh, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, because um, oh my gosh, somebody needs to pop over to the Foey Roller page and tell me the gal's name because I didn't look it up before I did this, and I want to give her credit, okay? So Colleen or Karen, can you guys go pop over, just open another FB tab, okay, Facebook tab, and go open Foey Rollers, and it's the gal that did the um, crocodile roller with the stain, okay? So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So I've created a stain, okay? This is a really dark color. Um, and a stain just is a, a more of a heavy, pigmented, thicker medium um, than like a glaze, okay? And I'm just brushing it on with a foam brush and I made the color strong enough that we could have some contrast with the background color. Uh, now, I'm not sure exactly which product she used, but you want to have a stain that has some body to it. It can't be a real thin stain, um, I think, to handle this. You're going to have to work with something that's a little bit thicker. And um, this is one, um, like I said, that I make most of my stains. So if you need a great stain, I'd be more than happy to actually create one for you. Um, you can see that it's thick, it's not running, it's, it's, yeah, it's perfect in a vertical. Um, um, I want to say Foafex has one too that is thicker, um, that they also have some great colors. Um, I love General Finish's products, but their stain is way too thin, I think, to hang in this vertical and do this protect particular technique. You'd have to kind of check it out and see, okay? Ooh, I got a bad glare going off of me. Let's see if we can get rid of that. Oh, I hate it when that happens in here. Um, we got some, you know, all that overhead lighting. Sometimes it just glares me out. Um, uh, Karen, sure. I mean, or you can just go ahead and, you know, have your base coat done for your students um, if you don't want to worry about that. Um, I would stay away from metallics if you're trying, okay, I'm answering Karen's question. She wanted to know if we did a base coat, could we use a blow dryer, speed up the process so we could actually do this in class. Um, I would stay away from metallics for the one reason that a metallic happens to be a very soft paint. It takes longer for it to 
cure and dry down to a harder surface. Um, so I would definitely um, use um, like a regular paint, okay? Anything that's going to dry fast that you can move on to the next level. Um, I'm going to address chalk paints at this point. Chalk paints are very porous, so I'm not sure I would use that maybe as my... Um, Oh, Sue Solitaire, thank you so much, Karen. I appreciate you doing that. Um, yeah, Sue is the one that did this finish for a customer, um, I believe on a job, and uh, it's just stunning. Okay, so my stain is on the wall, and I'm letting it sit there for a little while, you guys, because the one thing that you're going to find, hey, Sue, awesome. Okay, Sue, I'm demonstrating your technique here. We've already done our foiling, and yes, I rang. <laughs> So glad you had a minute to jump on. Um, and I'm going to do the finish that you did with the stain, okay, um, and the crocodile roller. Um, so I'm just addressing the fact that the type of stain I'm using is thick. I believe you used faux effects, and I saw somebody said the gel stains. Um, and I have to admit, you guys, um, I don't use the gel stains because I'm allergic to something in that product, okay? Whatever it is... Um, bothers me personally and it's an, it's an allergy, it's an actual reaction. So I can't work with them, I can't play with them. So um, somebody's going to have to tell me and kind of do it themselves if it's a thick enough product um, and a nice, you know, nice thick medium, um, you can definitely be able to use it. Um, you're going to find all your stains are going to be slippery, okay? So the one thing you want to do is let them sit. So the longer they sit, they do start to tack up a little bit, and that helps you to not slip. Um, so, Sue, was there any secret you had to not slipping with the stain? Um, and I'd love for you to share, um, since you know, I'm showing everybody what you did here, okay? <laughs> um, so, for Sue, I'm not sure what color foil you used. I put a bright gold in the background. And um, I'm using a custom stain that I did here that's kind of probably a combination of Van Dyke Brown, um, coffee bean, and I think a little bit of black. Um, stay below the roller. Stay below the roller. So stay below the roller. Okay. So you stay below it. Is that what you mean? That you're going down and that you're under the roller so don't let the roller go underneath you um, and yes I do walk that down a lot um, yes Carla I almost positive Sue used um, stain and seal um, by faux effects because it is a really thick product um, I looked to see if I had some still because I, I used to do a lot with faux effects and the one jar I opened okay I guess it eventually does just completely dry up um, so yeah, there was nothing nothing in that I could use. Okay, so we're going to give it a try. We're going to see, okay? We're going to see if, by chance, um, I can roll down here with no slippage, okay? And it is a trick, okay? Oh, see, I'm already sliding, okay? So, yep, I'm already sliding. So let's let this sit even longer, okay? Um, and the other thing is we also want to make sure that um, our roller is rolling really good. If I feel that it is um, not rolling really well on the handle, I'm going to show you what I spray. So give me a second. I'll be right back. Um, this is my favorite thing to spray on the handles, you guys, is I use it as a lubricator and just put some of the Pam cooking spray on there, which helps the rollers to all spin freely um, on the handles. So that way you know there's nothing gonna catch the roller and it will just spin really well. Um, I'm gonna try going from bottom to top. Oh, that's helping me a lot, okay? Um, and sometimes you have to figure out which direction is the best direction to actually roll. Um, Sometimes I find that um, I have really good results if I'm rolling from top to bottom, and sometimes I have to uh, roll from bottom to top. Okay, and she's saying she wiped the roller off every time. Okay, so I will offload it, and all I'm doing is I got a paper towel here, and I'm just 
rolling the roller back and forth on the paper towel to kind of offload that excess color. And let's see if I can get another nice pass here. Okay, not bad. Now I'm not pushing as hard as I normally do, so I'm losing some of the actual design, um, which doesn't bother me. And I'm gonna try to push a little harder here and see if I can actually get the whole pattern to come out and not slip. Okay, not too bad. So I'm having best results from, from bottom to top, okay? Let me see if I can get a good view of how that's actually turned out. Okay, so this is turning out really cool. Now, Sue did use two different colors. So she has a little bit more color variance um, in her finish. Um, I'm just using the one color that I created mixing several colors together, but I'm not brushing on different colors, okay? So I just used um, one color that I mixed up, um, and like I said, I think it was black, Van Dyke brown, and coffee brain beans. So I've got a nice, deep, rich color, and I want it strong contrast off of the gold background. Um, this is giving you, let me move back in here so you guys can see this really well. Um, it's got great dimension to it, and it's a quick and easy finish um, for a lot of really great drama. Um, so the biggest trick, um, I think, in using something like this, and I'm just going to wipe this out and do it again, okay, is um, making sure you've got a nice thick uh, stain, okay, that has a nice heavy body to it and that you're allowing it to sit up long enough, okay? So you've got to have working time, open time, definitely, um, but you also have to have it tack up enough that you're not going to end up with the slippage, okay, for the roller just to want to slide. So you have to, um, forgive me for not looking at you guys there, I was trying to prepare the wall again. Um, you got to find that happy medium, okay? I'm just offloading the roller again. Um, and because I did pick up some fresh material, um, I'm going to let this sit for a second. Um, but uh, I have to thank Sue for joining us and um, sharing what she did and her whole experience. And gosh, I don't know why. I started off this thing and I wasn't all whited out from the bright light above. And now I am. Um, so I want to wait here a minute and let this set up again. Um, for those that just joined, okay, just a quick recap, base coat, foil adhesive, transfer your foil, and now we're at the part of actually doing the roller with a stain medium, okay? And um, we're referring to possibly using General Finishes gel stain, faux effects stain and seal, um, or I actually make my own stains with a couple of different products I have here. Um, so you just got to have something that's heavy, heavier bodied. Because um, I know the one, um, I guess it's not a stain, it's um, general finishes. I like using their glaze, but it's, it's very thin, okay? So that wouldn't work. Now, you can also do this with a glaze. You just want to let also the glaze sit up long enough um, so that you are not going to end up with um, slippage. Okay, my feed went too fast and I missed a question right above Jill so if you want to repost your question I'll try to catch it um, yes Karen you definitely can use glaze okay um, and also you can do this with paint um, so if I wanted to use like a chalk paint and roll my roller through it I can um, or any paint um, general Foch's milk paint is wonderful also um, I always add a little glaze to those paints though because I want to give the paint a little bit more working time because you've got to get it on your surface and have, you know, you want to have the whole surface painted up before you get in there with your roller. Um, so you don't want to be like painting a section, rolling a section, painting a section, rolling a section if you can get away, with it, away from doing that. So um, put a little glaze in your paints, okay? And again, we're just going to do a quick little demo and see if we can get this to come out great. And again, I'm rolling from the base up and I am using some pressure and I'm not getting any slippage at all on that. That is what I call a perfect roll there. That is gorgeous, okay? And okay, I'm gonna move you guys a little 
little bit further over here and see if I can get you in a position where you guys can see me do this, okay? Um, I never worry about so much lining up uh, each pass. If there's a little overlapping, I think that's great, okay? You see that I'm rolling slow. I don't have to roll fast. Um, I, I find that I always um, find my students feeling like they're going to just roll as fast as they can, okay? Oh, you also flipped the roller. Um, yeah, there's probably a little, yeah, there's a little bit different to the pattern. So, that, yep, I'm going to flip this one, okay? I've been offloading between each pass, and I'm going to flip this one so that we'll have a little bit different pattern flipping there, okay? And again, I was able to use good pressure on that going from bottom to top. And like I said, I just always have to sometimes figure out which is the, the best direction to actually go. Um, there's times where I'm pulling from top to bottom and it works great, and there's other times I gotta flip and go the other way. Um, yes, Carla, this would be stunning on a piece of furniture. Um, so there's many, many mediums that you guys can use um, with the rollers. It doesn't have to be a texture medium. Uh, and gosh, you can see in the background, this has absolutely fabulous um, dimensional um, look. And because I do have the, um, the stain on here um, at a good thickness, okay, I wasn't being cheap with it. I, I did good coverage, okay. Um, there is a little bit of, you can even see up close, where it's kind of peaked um, the material. So it's, it's got a little bit of a three dimension to it. Um, okay, I want to read a question here. Uh, what kind of paper? Okay, so Karen, if you're asking uh, what I'm working on here, these are actually called styrene boards. Uh, let me pull another one off the wall here. Um, they're styrene. They're just a plastic material. Um, I get them cut into this particular size, which is 18 by 24. They make wonderful samples um, when we're trying to do um, wall finishes or just show something on a little bit larger scale. You can also cut these down into smaller samples. Um, and they work great. They're very lightweight. Um, we have to prime them though, okay? Prime them, paint them, and get them ready to go. Um, this roller here is the crocodile pattern, and um, you can order it online for those that are new here. Um, you can order it directly on my website, which is artisticpaintingstudio.com. Um, and before you order it, definitely go on and hear where, uh, there's a section where I can buy or something like a where to buy. Um, go into that section first, uh, put in your zip code, see if one of my retailers are um, close to you. And if they are, you can just drive down and pick up one of the rollers. Um, I'd say almost every retailer I have has a crocodile in stock. Um, and if you can't find it, um, nearby, then definitely just hit my website and we'll be more than happy to take care of you. Uh, but we've been growing our network of retailers and um, it's awesome because I know so many people, it's so much fun to just be able to go into these cute little shops and do some shopping and they can show you how to use the rollers and you can see them and figure out which pattern you want. So it's always awesome to be able to um, actually get to a retailer that's carrying my products. Uh, so I think I think that's about it you guys um, this is a fabulous finish and thank you so much Sue for sharing it to begin with and um, since Sue had shared all of her information on Foey roller group I thought it was perfectly fine to just go ahead and share the finish it was a simple easy one that I thought everybody could do um, I know sometimes people are scared about using the textures uh, this actually was done uh, with my texture medium and so all I did is trowel the texture medium over a medium gray and then I rolled my roller through here this one is called between the vines and I rolled it vertical and horizontal to get the like gingham pattern I still haven't finished this one I'm, I'm, I'm working on it okay that's why it's hanging up here okay <laughs> um, so hopefully I'll get to that one soon but um, I wanted to just be able to spend some time with you guys and just show you another easy way to use the rollers. Um, they're so much fun to work with and they really do just add some uh, great interest and texture and pattern to your projects, whether it's a piece of furniture, um, cabinetry, walls, fabric. 
I mean, there's just a lot of, oh, my floor, okay, I did my floor with one of the rollers. Um, you know, pretty much, if there's a surface um, that's hard enough, <laughs> not even hard enough, okay, you can do fabric. If there's a surface that just needs some uh, pattern and color, um, definitely give it some interest. Uh, again, you guys, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them. I'll definitely come back and answer anything I missed um, during this video. And um, if you want to go shopping, uh, you can definitely check us out at artisticpaintingstudio.com. Um, and if you would, hit the share button, you guys, and share this video with your friends and family. We always appreciate that. You guys have an absolutely fabulous Monday, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.